Hey, everybody. Hey, Tugboat. Hey, ED. How are you two doing today? This is some made up guy. What we're doing tonight is um, playing with friskets. And um, this is what got me going on it was um, I tried it on this guy and I was like, this looks rad as hell, but it totally tore up the paper. I don't know how easy it is to see, but like the paper came up here and paper came up here up the paper over there and also like the way I trimmed it you can feel when you run your finger across it like where I cut it like it cut into the paper too so I was gonna try it on my um, the paper I use for my comics and do a couple of little experiments with it and see um, if I can get it to work for me if I can, um, this could be a game changer. Well, hey, Kelly. And I presume Evie is in the house as well. Hi, Evie. ED. So that's what, uh, that's what I got planned. I think. Uh, so for anyone who does not know... Uh, this is the frisket that I'm talking about. It is a roll of sticker paper. It's a lot like um, kind of what you might use in your um, uh, like a shelf liner in your drawers or cabinets. Oh, hey, Carla. Thanks for stopping by. It's great to see you. It's been really, really fun um, seeing you on uh, Blue Sky lately. Because I, I don't think I'd seen you on Twitter in a long time. So this is what Frisket is. Hey, Mark. And uh, yeah, so let me get some paper here. What I was thinking I would do is... Do something... like something simple like i had those faces in the in my sketchbook like let's do a face like that just do a, a funny funny shaped head Yeah, I am only using Twitter nowadays to, um, like, I'm promoting my book that's coming out over the next couple months, um, but I feel like this is probably the last book that I'm ever going to promote on there. Like, I'm hoping by the time anything else comes out, there will be enough people everywhere else to that I won't sort of feel compelled Man, Twitter is miserable right now.
Oh, thanks, Tugboat. Yeah, Ruckus was um, not the chicken I was closest to, but she was, um, you know, they're all sweet. Even when they're, like, awful, they're sweet. And they work so hard for us. I'm going to cut kind of a big piece. Anybody knows back in the day, um, your people used to use a lot of um, Ruby Lith, was what it was called, to do color separations by hand. We used it a lot um, when I was making kids' clothes to do this, the screen printing separations. And we would trim the ruby lith. Ruby lith was basically like this, except the frisket was um, uh, red. So you could see through it, but it was like under photographic processes, it was black. Um, anyway, we'd use a blade like this, a little swivel blade to cut those out. And I used to be really friggin' good at it, but I don't think I am anymore. Also, this is kind of a shitty swivel blade. Yeah, it was a lot of work, but it was like um, so satisfying. It was like um, pulling a sunburn. Okay, so here's the first thing. As you can see that, well, I don't know if you can see. A little bit of that pulled up my ink just a tiny bit. Which could potentially be a problem. I guess you, you might be able to see it better there. You know, it's got the face on it. So now, I'm going to throw a little ink in the airbrush. Okay, so now I want to save this little 
face here. Maybe if I can stick it over here. There we go. So now if we pull this off of here, it's going to be beautiful. And look at that, like that's so beautiful. It's just so perfect. And see what's what I don't like about it. Maybe I'm just not good enough at trimming the the frisket, but it's like there's a now there's a line of stickiness where I cut, where it's like some of the glue on the frisket stays on the paper. I guess if I do this, it comes off. But like rubbing on your artwork like this is like just asking for putting a big old smudge, even when you think it's absolutely dry. Yeah, the airbrush, so the ink that I put through the airbrush is this FW stuff, and it dries really fast when it hits. You know, I think it's like halfway dry by the time the little dots hit the paper even. So now here's like the real test, is if I put this over... Like, so the test is going to be to see if I can get this back up. All right, now I'm gonna hit this with the hair dryer in a little bit, just in case. Oh my gosh, Carla, yeah, his coloring on the original Mage books was so good. It's a bummer that they had to recolor it. I heard it was um, like all the, the films were swiped by that scam dude who used to run Kamiko. Such a bummer though. Cause that book is beautiful. Okay, here's the test. Let's see. Uh, yeah, that came up nice. There's a little bit of like, 
white where like the frisket because the frisket sticks up a little bit But that could kind of be fixed. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, he does look like pissed at this fart. with my focus doesn't like the soft airbrush or something well, that's neat that works okay so now like the next thing to try is Like, can I do this frisket over the top of watercolor? Because that's like, I think, I think I'm going to, if I'm going to use this in like a real way, like, I would probably use it after I've done a little bit of watercolor stuff. So I don't know what I'm going to draw. Maybe a little apple. So the trick with stuff like this with watercolor is just knowing how long to let it dry. It can be very, like it's always a little bit of a guessing game. Hey, Pippi Pop. Hey, Ty. Thanks. I really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, this is not this is not art school, Ed. But art schools kind of suck anyway.
Okay. Hit this with the airbrush. That's so nuts watching videos while you're in a bookstore, but thanks, Mark. But I do not know. Oh, I've never heard of Onidi. All right, this time I'm going to try cutting it off with this exacto the best exacto blades probably for this are not these super long pointy ones am i cut all the way i'm gonna get a fresh blade I have um, a couple apple trees. And yeah, it's the time of year where it's like just dropping apples. Like none of them are ripe yet, but it just drops apples. So like in the night, there's little thump, 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 thumps coming from the yard all night long. So Pippi, this is for, um, I'm just doing some experiments with Frisket film to see if I can sort of integrate it into my working process. Right now I'm testing to see like what happens if I do it over the top of some watercolor. I don't know if I'm cutting this all the way through. Oh, I am. All right. So now I have only the apple exposed. Hit it with a drop of burnt umber. That was literally one drop of burnt umber. Let's try two drops of burnt umber.
So there's a little bit of water in the airbrush from the last time. So I don't know if you can see it, how the ink beat it up just a tiny bit. It probably won't show up. Anyway, hit it with the airbrush now. That worked pretty good. It's still got um, a little bit of stickiness to it. But it's easier to cut. Like I was pressing a lot harder when I did this guy. And I do not have to press that hard to cut this out. <laughs> we got Mott in the other room yelling at me to unmute too. It doesn't look like it pulled up any watercolor. Um, and all I did was run the airbrush over it for a minute. And that's really good. That's the biggest thing about using the airbrush is sometimes you need it for like one little squirt and then you have to clean it all the way out again. And it can feel like, um, like it can actually lead me to overuse the airbrush occasionally. Cause I'll be like feeling like I got it all the way out and stuff. I don't want to just do one tiny squirt and then spend five minutes cleaning it out again. Oh, hey, Rudak. Yeah, Carla, absolutely. It's a sunk cost fallacy. There we go. Hmm. So people who have watched me on the regular know that I often do the thing where I ink an image in like burnt umber or do some sort of under color 
which I think if I had done that on this apple would have hidden these little white, I don't know if you can see that tiny white speck. That's from the frisket not being perfectly aligned again. But it's nice how I, this little gradient on the leaf is lovely. Yeah, absolutely, Carla. Underpainting is like, if you can get the underpainting right, then the overpainting is just like effortless. What else should I try? Maybe I should try doing my brown underpainting. So the thing about, the reason I'm doing this really is because I keep being tempted to try to do it on an actual project, but um, it's like I don't want to do it when I could potentially ruin the piece and have to start over. And this feels like I'm learning a lot, but I don't know, man. There could totally be like, a, I could 100% see doing this on like a giant piece and just it tearing apart. And I've done that with like my masking tape when I mask off the edges where it's like worked great. And then all of a sudden one time it just is a nightmare. Hey, thunderstorm. I'm not sure what you mean by maybe a coin. It's, yeah, it's fun with the airbrush, but it's also fun with the frisket is what we're doing. We're messing with is the frisket film. You can see how I masked off this dude's head. Oh, I got you, Thunderstorm. A coin would be interesting, actually. Oh yeah, fire or waves. That's interesting. I think I think for the way I work, using frisket for that stuff would be um, kind of painful. <laughs> like that would just be so much cutting. Especially when I, um, oh, you know, that, that's something I wanted to try, though, um, is using the frisket with watercolor instead of the airbrush, like how well it works to lay out some frisket and then slop some watercolor over the top.
Okay, well, here's a good goober. Hit this with the air brush or with the hair dryer. Thanks, Carla. I have been trying hard to get better at my faces. And this is like more goofy than I would probably put in a typical like comic or whatever, but um, you know, I fall back on my little face formula that I have developed over the years, like way too, way too easily. So what I'm going to do is put this here, and then we got these giant holes. And I think I'll just cover them with masking tape. Yeah, that, um, that little face formula that we've all worked out is um, a blessing and a curse. So the question when cutting this out is there's like three ways I could do it. Like I could do, I could do the outside of the brown line or the inside of the brown line, or I could try to keep it right down the center. And I do not know what would work best. I'm going to try the center for now. Come on, man.
All right. One thing that's terrifying about trying to pick this up with the razor blade is every time you make a little scratch in the paper, like I just know my watercolor is going to hit that scratch and just go super dark. I'm not familiar with BD from Journey. Oh, lightning in a cloud. That's interesting. I wonder how I would approach that with airbrush. Would probably, for like the actual lightning, use paint more than I would want to do a frisket for it. Although, like, I wonder if I could do a mask. Like, using the white of the paper lots of times works really better. Okay, so let's hit this guy with some color. Trying to find fun colors. Oh, wait, Carla, is Journey like um, by Bill Messner Loeb? Is he like, um, God, does he have kind of like a, uh, what's the vibe of his work? It's like a real cartoony version of water, of, um, Oh my god. I always do this on stream. I forget everybody's names. Who's this who's the swamp thing guy? Yeah. I think there was a bunch of his pieces at a local gallery, weirdly out here in the middle of rural Oregon. And that's how I first heard of him. Look at how pretty that is. So good. God, that looks like a freaking computer did it. In a good way.
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I might have a copy of Journey floating around someplace. Yeah. To me, this has, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Lil Abner vibes. Yeah, and it like you can see where the green is on the line. I don't know. I think you can if I hold it still. But I think if I throw this on there, well, like the place that's going to have a hard time lining up is on the very tips of these little hair bits. If I can get those kind of lined up and then rotate around. Oh, the next fun color. I actually have this gold ink that I bought a long time ago and have never, never once used. <laughs> well, Hulkner. pretty. So I have a little goober on the thing. Let me try to pull that off actually. There we go. Gold is beautiful. So the sh I don't know if the shimmer is coming across on camera, but it's like very gold. I got this, but I've never used it because um, like it'll probably scan like shit. Oh my, you made me think of doing rim lighting. I think I know that would be interesting to try. Like let's and pull this guy up. Oh, that gold is very opaque. It totally like obliterated my brown line. 
Man, it makes that green really glow, though, doesn't it? So check this. What if I now take this and, like, offset it a touch and then take this guy so funny like all this frisket stuff like if this were the 70s or the 80s I would have like learned this on day one but now we have to like decode it like people trying to figure out how they built the pyramids All right, now I'm gonna throw a little bit of white on there. And a little more airbrush. It looks like the airbrush is making the frisket buckle a little bit, just heating it up. That's interesting. It still seems to be pretty usable. Like it's still kind of still pretty sticky. Huh. Not like a, it's not like a great rim light. Like I'd probably do better hitting that with a a brush than doing the airbrush. Then if this were like a real thing, then I would probably go in and do some selective blacks.
keeps sort of going off screen. <laughs> you guys are weird. But that's very satisfying. And doing the, um, just like the gradient on the figure is so satisfying to me. See, I think doing white with the brush is a little bit, a little bit better probably. Yeah, Thunderstorm, a lot more control with the brush, I think. And also, like, rim lighting doesn't really land the way the frisket wanted it to go. It's a little more complex than that. What would Corbin do? Man, I hope somebody does some more like stuff now that he's got, now that they're working on those reprints. Um, his coloring process seemed um, incredible. Like um, super manual, super like way before computers existed. Um, and frankly, it seems like genius, like the way he did it. That shine on the nose is way too big. Yeah, that those reprints, that den book. I have the um the one the first one they put out, Murky World. And that one's great. But I am really looking forward to Den. I haven't actually ever read more than a handful of Den stories. I'm really excited to be able to read the whole thing. And it looks so gorgeous. Oh, what is that? Uh, 
it's like some of the gold oversprayed or is coming loose or something and leaving like a powder on the page. Man, I should wear a mask when I spray that gold. I bet it's terrible for me. I mean, it's all terrible for me. Yeah, Carla, I want to know more about how Mobius does like did like his airbrush stuff too. Like that's part of like what got me thinking about using Frisket. Is he like I assume it's airbrush. It could be like a uh like a watercolor gradients that he did on a lot of his stuff, but man, it's gorgeous. All right. Well, I think I'm going to call that a night. I think this was a very successful little experiment. I think I learned a lot about working with Frisket. And hopefully you did too. And these drawings are very satisfying. This is like little gems of drawings. That I love that. Like it would look good on a t-shirt, these faces. This apple, not so much. All right. So, yeah, I am going to call it a day. Thanks, Thunderstorm. Nice, Carla. All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, I really appreciate you spending the, your evening with me on a Friday night. I hope everybody has a great weekend and has a wonderful next week. And, you know, don't forget to tell the people you love how much you love them. And I love all you guys. Take care.